Anyway, enjoy the elevator music. <laughs> as you say that right as I hit record. Okay. <laughs> so I'm opening up my phone to start the timer and go. Welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. The second Blind Sense Podcast. Second two. <laughs> one and one and one and one two. <laughs> Uh, so this setup's a little bit different. We're doing this one over Skype. So if you hear any weird noises, I just want you folks at home to know that Mike is over spinning plates on his end. He, yes, I. He, he said very, it was very important. Very elegantly, in fact. <laughs> uh, on today's episode, and we also you might notice that we put ourselves in front of the music for this episode because we kind of wanted to point out that yes, this is actually a talking, somewhat humorous podcast. Yeah. Instead of, like, the minute 30 music that I put on the... Cause, hey, I'm new. <laughs> hey, we're trying... We're just... Basically, the music is there for, hey, this is cool, and we wanted to do something cool for the first episode. It so was, that's what happened. It was really badass, though, wasn't it? I mean, like... I love the music. Yeah, <laughs> Mort Mark, by the way. <laughs> Snowflake did a great yeah, job composing awesome. that. So, um... We've got on today's show uh, trying to discuss Pathfinder Strange Aeon's Adventure Path. Uh, may go into a bit of Call of Cthulhu on that. Uh, also touch uh, a little bit on Starfinder, the, the new uh, setting that's coming out. And of course that would cause us to harken back to uh, the old D&D spell jammer that used to exist. Exactly. So, uh, We're going to try to throw a little bit of everything in there and hopefully you will enjoy it. Yep, but first, I'm going to do the thing. From the music break it was it's all magic guys like but mike was using his wizard powers and you like it was oh we're gonna record this over skype this time i'm like how's that gonna work i'm gonna have to set up audacity all weird and he's like why don't you just put the magic device in the corner and have it record us yeah instead exactly. of instead of making it so difficult you idiot <laughs> hey we're new at this, so you know, bear with us. Buddy. There will be some bumps in the road. And we're doing this because we enjoy talking more than anything. But yeah, <laughs> so we we figure it, since we enjoy talking about D and D, we might as well actually put this out in a. So, well, yeah. I I didn't hit you. With, I didn't hit you with this yet, Mike. But I was thinking, it's like, uh, can I say this was built on a dare? Because. Oh, yeah, basically, kind of was. Well, basically I kept bugging you. Expand my horizon, so yeah. there you go. I kept bugging you as like you need to write a blog or something, Mike. People will care about these opinions and want to discuss them with you. And uh, that is yet to be seen. But well, no, yeah, we well, we, we do. Hey, our, uh, our, <laughs> our I have a very unique opinion. Let's currently four subscribers on SoundCloud, one of which is our friend Rob, and we think the other ones are bots. So, really? Yeah, we'll take what we can get, though. Clearly, we are loved. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yes. We're sexy bots. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I could always use some more sexy bots. Uh. <laughs> Bring in the fan bots! And we just start right into the adult part. So, yeah. Well, I may okay. as well bring up, because I was going to... She's... Yeah, this is, uh, by the way, folks, a uh, somewhat adult podcast. Again... We do not go out to overtly shock you, but we will from time to time say a few swears. Uh, we will bring up a, a conversations <laughs> of adult situations, and it's uh, something that is hopefully done in, in good fun and humor. And if you have a problem with that, I understand. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I understand. I just well. Well, judge I was, you I was hoping those back. people hit pause Just and now like those, Christians, I will judge those, those people hit pause and they're gone now, so we're safe to talk. It's all good, yeah. yeah. Bye. 
Don't Thanks let for tuning in. Uh, it was um I heard this line used again recently by Stephen Colbert is like, Don't let the door hit you where the good lord split you. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect, actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, since we already got into some of the, the adulting topics, oh, um, yeah, yeah. something I had here in uh, my notes for this episode, trying to follow some of the itinerary, add some correction. Uh, that, oh, from the past previous Yeah. Years. Because, I mean, like, uh, again, we're not perfect. We will make mistakes, and we would like you to, to know as much as we do what is right and wrong of what we've said. So... Yes, um, if we do make mistakes, we will go try to go back and correct ourselves. It's been, and, you know, hey, we made a mistake. So, geez, what has it been? Ten years since I looked at uh, the it's probably the, yeah the stuff from college, the book of erotic fantasy, and yes, it's um, been a long time. Yes, because <laughs> I'll be honest, that book was kind of a one and done. It's like ah, this is interesting. <laughs> Maybe I'd bring it out to uh, to make Eric blush from time to time when he was annoying me, but that was right. about the yeah. half of well, it. Well, that's what Doug did too. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's a good way to get Eric to clam up. Unfortunately, uh, sorry, Eric, because yeah. we love your brother. But yeah, <laughs> you want this conversation to be done? Just start with that. To be fair, folks. Eric is still one of the best DMs we ever had. So there you go. Absolutely. Well, I mean, like we said in the last episode, yeah, it works like anybody else. So yeah. Well, like we said in the last episode, which nobody probably listened to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> we, well, he well, he well, let well. he let me get away with a lot, and I appreciate that. But you oh, know. Yeah. Well, it wasn't in Nash. Well, he wanted the, us to succeed in what we tried to do. So, yeah. he was a very permissible DM, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So, no, there not in everything in moderation. But, um, yeah, exactly. My correction... No, he didn't let us get away with completely ridiculous things. <laughs> we take so long to do things. My correction that I was trying to get to here is... Um, the oh, uh, the disease, quote unquote, Azure balls. Azure balls, yes. Uh, that I mis I mistook that for the one. one. Yeah. yeah, I mistook that for the one at the end of the disease list in that book. It was actually called Whore's Delight. I looked this up. Um, Whore's Delight is not a, very delightful. Yes. <laughs> and it, they claimed <laughs> that it was named after um, unscrupulous uh, men and and hookers who used it in their practices, whatever. But the deal, exactly. yeah. the deal is you got to make a DC 15 fortitude save, or you're going to be paralyzed for 1D4 hours. Yeesh. <laughs> yeah. That's all fair. I know, right? Well, she, man, she, That's well, not she, very delightful. She That's must all. have been good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, hey. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. With the would you or... The would you or won't you? How uh, how attractive does she have to be before you're gonna whisk, risk being paralyzed for one d four hours? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, nah, I don't know. <laughs> I've never had it that good. Uh, but Azur balls is uh, oh by the way, Whore's delight is listed as a quote unquote mildly debilitating disease. Mildly. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Azur Balls, it does 1d3 dex damage twice if you fail at its saving row, uh, saving throw, which is a dc16, which is... It's even worse, yeah. It's, just... a, it's a tad extreme to me. Dex damage? Are you serious? Well, yeah, well, because you figure you, you can only heal one dex damage per day unless you have yeah, you know, extra care or whatever. It, you know it's what I mean? like even... <laughs> Hypothetical, like I've never been so bad that it's like I can't move for two days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm so I, uncoordinated again because you know, I had sex with you know. Again, I, the longing must be incredible. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, sometimes I wish some of these you know things would apply more more appropriately to real life, but yeah, it's a game, I so mean, I understand. Yeah, well, I too. mean. You know what I mean, but it's 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 and of so course, much a little ridiculous. Of course you can do ridiculous things in it and okay, since it was a disease, maybe it's not technically quite the same. But at well, some point I gotta go is like that's not realistic at all. Diseases <laughs> like, and poisons are not very realistic in Pathfinder to begin with. Unless you use, you know, the, the alternate rules from uh, Unchained that but some of those are a little more ridiculous, they're more appropriate, but they're also scary. Yeah. Well, like, if you get bit by a poisonous snake in Pathfinder, you won't die. 
Yeah, that's but true. But in real life, if you get bit, bit by that black mamba, you're dead. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, there's, you know. It's trade-offs. I mean, like, there are games that I've heard get so realistic that they have an advanced physics that you need to sit out there and calculate. So, conceivably, you're spending the entire night playing this uh, role-playing game, and you're just moving your character. Like... <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's... How is that fun for everyone else? That's not a whole lot of fun, really. I I, so. Well, you have to, you have to, you know... Set your expectations at the door when you're playing a, a simulation, yeah, type of game because you know, frankly, that's that's what it is. You know what I mean? You you have to sacrifice realism for game balance and you know just fun. <laughs> All right. Now it doesn't always work out, but you know, this is one of the more minor infractions you can probably think of. You know what I mean? Um, just so people don't start yelling at us, which you're already probably tapping away angrily on your keys. Let's skip ahead uh, into uh, Pathfinder yes. Strange Aeon's Adventure Path. You told oh, me a little great. bit. You told me a little bit about it, Mike. What I mean, like where you want to start. What's your thoughts on it? Okay, this, if this is an adventure path based on the Cthulhu mythos. Uh, developed by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, it's also got a Pathfinder spin on it, so not like normal Call of Cthulhu type games. The end is not unavoidable. That's, you can actually okay, I was gonna. I was thinking, should I bring this up or should I bring this up? I remember in college getting into a fight with our friend Galen about uh, yeah. like because he <sighs> love you, Galen, but yeah. <laughs> He, he's a decent guy, he's a fun guy, but I remember getting into a, an argument with him about, in my opinion, I will stress right. that to our audience, in my opinion, my estimation, from what I have read of Call of Cthulhu especially, and the rest of the mythos, these things are so evil and so powerful, well, not necessarily evil. That you have no chance against some are, them. Some are apathetic, but yes, you have no chance. It is a matter of time. Especially with with Cthulhu himself, like the end is not yes. To uh, <laughs> to quote H.P. Lovecraft, that is not dead, which may ev may forever lie, and in strange eons, even death may die. Which is where they got the name for the adventure path, yes. Yeah. Which I they believe is right out of Call of Cthulhu, if I remember correctly. Yep, because that's uh, something that. Uh, the main character in that story had found on his uh, research of the cult of Thulu. And I actually I li listened to a really good audiobook version that, that you had made me privy to, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. The narrator in that was exceptional because one of the things I didn't quite understand, everybody in popular culture calls it Cthulhu. I mean, that's right. just the way people have come to learn to say it. But it's just easier to pronounce than probably well, it's, what the it's more accurate. The thing is. Yeah. It's more accurate to say that Thulu because it's like imagine how a person with a mouthful of tentacles would be trying to say this. Exactly. Like, yes. <laughs> this is this is you know Cthulhu is more your hey, this is the way humans pronounce it rather than yeah. you know the great entities of the mythos would you know say the sort of things. But I mean. Uh, for, for uh, a description for people who are not already familiar with uh, Cthulhu, think like a, a giant, you know, squid dragon monster is basically how he's described in the book. Dragon with a squid face. Yes. Yeah, squid head, you know, the, the big bulbous sack for cranium and uh, the... And slime. Probably very slime, yes. But he had like dragon claws and wings too, as I recall. So mm -hmm. that was... You know, I mean, there's there's multiple. You know, just just go Google it. You can probably find all kinds of images. <laughs> oh, there's that, there's great you know, renditions that and uh, I've seen plushies that were pretty cute. You know what to I mean? be, but, yeah. yeah, to be honest, probably not many people have not heard or seen of, of Cthulhu before. Well, no. very people that don't really care probably, but yes, yeah, yeah no. yes, like anybody yeah. that's read science fiction or horror or fantasy knows about Cthulhu. Well, it's like there was a, a girl I met when I was in communication in college that was like, okay, do I have the talk with her or I don't? Because the question <laughs> she had for me was, 
Morse, what are orcs? And it's like, oh, that's a whole can of worms. Here, watch this movie. <laughs> It's like, Lord of just, the Rings. This is just watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, just that's... watch Lord of the Rings. But see, and We're Eric... fighting Orokai! Which, yeah, Eric which, gets uh, mad at me because he, he likes uh, original Tolkien orcs and Orokai. But I, I actually really love the Warhammer 40k orcs, which are like a, a, a ridiculous mockery. Because it's all hot need accents. I like those better, too, a lot of the time. Because <laughs> they're just so cool. My, well... It's it's very amusing to me. Warhammer so 40k, great game by the way. If any of you are into our uh, RPG strategy games, um, never played it, but yeah. It, well, it's not so much an RP as an overhead strategy, but still. Yeah, it, but yeah um, well, that's my type of game. But great you know, characters. I never got a chance to play that, so there you go. Great characters, great voice acting. Love the lines, love the chaos, love the orcs. Orcs that, are made for fighting. That's and where I was gonna. For, orcs is made for fighting and winning. Okay, the winning part, I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get stuck in with the boys. <laughs> Morris, that's one of the things I've always appreciated with, was the voices. You can do those very well. So, yeah. I try. <laughs> well, you gotta, you got to hear your, 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 your Smeagol voice to do anything, but yeah. Should I? Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go ahead. Go for the audience. I, I wasn't going to hit this, uh, but the, back in high school, I was messing around with my voice. I figured out I could do it if I calibrate myself on the lines. We'll see if I'm off. Been drinking a lot of caffeine here. <laughs> smoker. Razor Crown Smoker. Master Betrayers. Of course you did, Smoker. For the torture here is Trixie. The torture he was fast. He stores the precious, and now he wants it. See, yeah, that's awesome, Morris. That's I don't, awesome. I don't think I was spot on, thing. but I, you know, I wasn't too far off. So that's, that's Smeagol cool. slash Gollum, whatever. But I still <laughs> think it's I. I could never do that. That's all I'm saying. Well, and it's something that like I didn't know I could do it either. But if you you know. As I've been researching on, I'm kind of interested in voice acting, so like I've been dabbling in how can right. I get started, and uh, they they say it's it's not making voices. It's not if it was doing voices, it would be called doing voices. It's about portraying characters. I'm trying to grow at that, but right. you're never gonna be able to do the the voices, boys and girls, unless you start messing around with your own voice and see what your range is. Um, yeah, my range is that what is not that good. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, play with I, it. I can do a lot of. I can do accents. I can do all that stuff. I just. Mom and Dad That's tell you not to play with it, kids, but I'm going to tell you right now: play with it, and then you'll find out. See, there we've already gone into adult. <laughs> well, that's also with with you know with the voices doing that. That's that's a good you know if if you want to be a DM. It's good to be able to do voices. Oh, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons. Like I said, I can do a lot of voices, but that's a little far field even for me. Well, and whenever that's why we uh, sometimes uh, I have you read some of the parts yeah. of some of the characters because I know you can do it better. Than yeah, me. when it, well, whenever we were uh, talking about how I like to help you out going over the PDFs, like I mm -hmm. like to read off the voices because like. Well, I uh, enjoy when you do it too because then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's well, it's also a lot easier for you to say, "Hey, look at this." Look at this, you know, this group of literature, and I can read it off rather than me going. I have yeah. to remember all this stuff. Yeah, that's you know, that's the one difference. You can like you'll have your it. you'll have yeah. your Jaws program. You read off a line. It's like, oh crap, what was the next line? Uh, yeah, he says this too. Go back again. Yeah, it's <laughs> a pain. I mean, if it's somebody that I don't have to worry about, you know, it's like somebody I'm just making up their voice. That's easy. That I can do that. Or if I'm doing my own campaign where I can just make up the voices for the characters, that's fine. Mm. But if I'm doing a published adventure, it's a lot easier for me to have me have well have you do it because you're very good with voices. You're you're just very good with them. Yeah, I could always. I especially enjoy the pirate ones, but yeah. <laughs> I could. I really, really love. And here we're gonna bring Wheel of Time into it again. But I oh, really, yeah, really yeah. love Bale the yeah. Bale Doman yeah. and the other Ilianers because they all they all have that piratey. They all sound like pirates, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
I do no be sailing back to that port, even if I do be leaving me poor aged grandmother standing upon the pier. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I can do that one to a certain extent because I've read that book so many times. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, by the way, I actually, yeah, we want people, if you like really long, really, 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 really long epic fantasies, there you go. Yeah, where we go, we're pitching Robert Jordan and uh, again, technically Brandon again, Sanderson again. But, yeah. Um, it's a good series. I, I love it. Is, um, it has its high points and its low points it's for me. It's not that's... the best series in the world, but it's absolutely not the worst either. So it's, the thing is, you have to get past the first. Yeah, and After and I will I will fun. argue that even when there's a section in the middle where, as particularly a couple of the female characters, they go through some trials that it's like mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I really like you right now the way you're behaving. Exactly. They they get better, folks. So it's like I do believe well, it's worth most till the end. Of them. Most of them, well. <laughs> we won't go um, into a lane because we both pretty much. I think okay. she gets a little more no. towards the end no. of the No, I'm so. going to say it. The whole damn way through the books, I was like, you know, I hope she just falls down some stairs and dies. <laughs> but, uh, you see, I'm also a lot more partial to blondes than you are, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, well, that, that don't do a I thing for like me. I still like the other two characters better than her as I'll, Graham. Dude, choices, but yes. <laughs> Just reading the descriptions, uh, her mother, Queen Morgays, holy crap! That's more attractive. Than <laughs> it's like, I would, I would say, forget as, Elaine. As Robert Jordan puts it, she's a more riper version. I think. Yeah, that's what a, a rose fully in bloom, something like that. I think was one yeah. of the analogies one time. And I'm like, freaking, and she's even got a better attitude than Elaine does. So it's like, for, forget that. Oh, well, she's older and she's wiser. So yeah. Like, I think Elaine, once she grows up, she probably won't be so bad as she is now. But, you know what I mean? It's, I it's, don't want her to live that long. <laughs> I know. Guys. I know that's not canon, but... <laughs> I know. I understand. I really do understand, but, yeah. Uh... I mean, the people that... Some of the people that died in the series, I, I were a little more upset about them dying than maybe. I wish that Elaine would die instead. You know what I mean? Like Snowy. She dies. I mean, uh, sorry, spoiler alert. But she dies, and I was like, oh, she's like the most, one of the most attractive people in that series. Spoiler-rich environment here. Okay, so. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> well, like, I, I, yeah. Uh, it'll come up later. I know it will. But, uh, uh, well, it'll come up probably in the next 12 episodes. Okay. <laughs> we'll never stop talking if about it. If we make it to the next 12 episodes. But, yeah, there you go. Why not? This is super easy. It's magic. We just put up the magic recording device, and we're good. Well, because Tenobi is like Fael, except massively more attractive to me, at least, anyways. Well, she's a lot she's... more bitchy, but I still like her better. I don't. I I would argue no, because she's she's not got a male counterpart that you see her directly being bitchy to. That's and true. That, yes. That's my main problem with the the Fael Perrin dynamic. Is well, it... Tenobi is a queen, so she's supposed to be bitchy. So yeah. you know what you got to keep your well, subjects really in line. Really upset me when they killed her off. It really did. Mm. But what about uh, Fael can become queen? I'm like fuck that bullshit. You know what I mean? Excuse my French. <laughs> Je suis. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Whatever. We probably should get off. Like I said, get yep, off this let's uh, move on. Let's get angry. <laughs> so, strange, strange eons was where we were before we once again oh, go yes. into a wheel of time tangent. Um, we were definitely on strange eons, which is ah, uh, it's if you like Cthulhu stuff, it's pretty freaking awesome. Even if you don't, it's a pretty awesome. It's a very awesome. It's one of my favorite out of all the adventure paths they've done so far. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd probably, I'd put it in my top five. I'm not sure if it's number one yet, because I haven't read The Last Adventure yet, because it's, I haven't, you know, because I have to, I have to buy the PDFs because, you know, I can't get prescriptions, or prescriptions, yeah. Uh, you could buy yeah. the books, but then you'd have to use a scanner to get them in the computer. Well, and... you, you, every month people can, <laughs> hey, I can get the, you know, where I, I get every, my subscriptions early. I, oh, subscription, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, anyways, you can, which means no. you would get the PDF early while they ship your book. I'm blind. Uh, I do not get a physical copy because it doesn't do me any good. Although I do have physical copies of some things. I actually got some pretty... 
I actually have one that's signed by one of the designers, so that's pretty cool. But anyways, we'll get back to that. I, I would argue, though, my friend, that perhaps it is a prescription. It is your medicine because you needs it. <laughs> well, yeah, I need it to live, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, if I did not get a new subscription every, well, at least a new PDF of some sort every month, I'd go crazy. Because mm. it's one of the things that, well, it's one of the things I really enjoy doing. It's, I love the whole history of a weird world that, that just does not exist. You know, it's a lot cooler place than our own world a lot of the times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know. I'm living in my own personal horror story of Trump as president. So there you go. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, here we go. Throw that in there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, not to be fair, I did not like Clinton any better, so don't yeah. kill me. <laughs> but yeah. Please don't kill us. Yes, please. Well, well, if you want to kill me, at least, you know, make sure I have a resurrection spell handy later. I said but nothing, yeah. folks, okay? I said yeah, nothing. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I know what you feel too, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I, I'm actually not afraid to tell them that why. Well, you're why, you're, you're pretty much in the same. You hate Trump and you hate Clinton both, so. You're why antagonize people? Like we need to come together on this. But that is, mm -hmm. that's it. That's all the more political I'm gonna get. Um, so are there any uh, classes? Because folks, I haven't read this, and this is not because I'm lazy at all. It has all to do with. With, uh, Mike is usually the DM, so I don't want to spoil myself, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, what, what do you want to know? What basically, uh, uh, new classes, uh, anything that particularly no, piques no, your no interest? Classes. It's, it's basically Adventure Path. Um, there's really no, they actually, in one of the Adventure Paths, they volume, they actually did a whole mythos volume for, for the different uh, entities in the mythos. Uh huh. Which they had 20, so they had 20 uh, gods slash deities slash whatever you want to call them. Some are full gods, like outer gods, and other are just great old ones. Mm -hmm. um, which is a sting distinguished, basically, you know, you can fight great old ones, but you can't really fight the gods because they don't have stats. But they, they <laughs> added a bunch of... In most cases, though, folks, again, if you're not in the know, it's probably not a wise idea. To go fighting a great old one. <laughs> yeah, because they're really like, powerful. This is probably ill advised. Yeah, they're they're extremely powerful creatures. Um, well, and then there's is there sanity rules in this one? Uh there's no directly involved in the sanity. Um, they give you options that you can add some of the sanity rules from horror adventures. Like, if okay. you want to put that in there. Yeah, well, I remember, like, to do that. in the, the old, you know, th 3.0 had it, too, I think. 3.5, I know for sure, had it. Um, Headbutt. Which Pathfinder is 3.5, more or less. I got to say it's that. It's 3.7. So it's, yeah, it's close. <laughs> it, it was, let's good put a different name on it it's since we're a different company. Plus, plus, instead basically. of fighting over, you know. Uh, it's good enough for me. Let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> it's not that much different for 3.5. It, it refines a few things. It doesn't fix everything, but it makes the 3.5 system much easier to deal with, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, no, like, I remember there were sanity rules, and then in at least one of the, the Call of Cthulhu variants, there were uh, things that, like, could go wrong with you if you saw... A great old one, because I mean, like, again, oh. the H.P. The Lovecraft uh, sense of this is that these things are beyond our world, beyond our understanding in a lot of cases. Basically, with this adventure path, you're just you're just a normal adventurer. So you're one to I think you probably hit 17, 18, probably at the end, which is still just a basic human with extra. You in order to fight a great old one, you would have to have mythic power. Yeah. And that's a whole different subsystem. Now, you could probably convert this game into that and fight some of the big things at the end. Because you, you still encounter some of these things, but they give you, uh, excuse me, I probably should say spoiler alert, uh, you know, that you could possibly fight some of these things at some point in, in the campaign. Mm. Um, you don't have to, I don't think. Um, I know there's... It, it, you, you basically encounter some toned-down versions of some of these creatures 
of the great old ones. So like, you um, can still fight some of them, but it's not necessarily anything you have to. Like aspects of them in the sense that, like, I know the the old demon lords in that one, they'd appear on a different plane. It w- they wouldn't physically be there, but there would be an aspect of them that had a fraction of their power. You know what I mean? In the fifth adventure, yes, there is some of that. Um, one of the early adventures, which I think is the third one, you actually, if you're not careful, you could actually face a full-powered version of one of the of the great old ones. Um, Coward out. Back down. <laughs> yeah. You, Run I away, mean, kids. <laughs> you don't have to stick around and basically face them, so, but you can't. Mm. And I... They don't have any stats for this great old one, as far as I know, so I, you have to make the shit up. But it's still... That's, it's, that's the point yeah. if, uh, if Eric were DMing, he just turns to us and goes, uh, so, you want to get started rolling your new character? Oh, no, wait, the, no, they actually do use one of the, the ones from the Monster Manual... What was the last one? Fifth? Five, no, four. Which, I guess you could possibly face him if you see him. I was thinking it was Yig, but it's not Yig. So... Hmm. And they have not done it yet. It's I, I believe the one you do see. Spoiler alert! So you know, tune out if you don't want to hear this. Is Botret, which is from I think is from the Nameless City, if I remember correctly. Okay. But yeah, you could po- possibly actually get into the whole scene from the Nameless City if you actually play through that. <laughs> hmm. Because it's sort of like, because you go into the dreamlands, which, where this creature is from, and you possibly could, basically, because the dreamlands, time is not fluid, it's, you know, it's not, you know what I mean? Time is convoluted to steal a a line from Dark Souls. (laughs) Pretty much, yes. So, you basically show up during this raid that Lockrit does in this story from Lovecraft, which is kind of cool, actually. But, yeah, you don't really want to stick around where he's showing it, because he's like a CR-27, he's nasty, and you're like level 10 at that point. So <laughs> you're, you're pretty much a dead man if you stick around. So you're saying the odds are a little stacked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you won't die because you're in the dreamlands and you're, you're both. Uh-huh. He's not actually there, it's just your mind. But you might get, like, some sanity damage and, you know, you might go insane from some of that stuff. Fair enough. So, it's, like I said, spoiler yeah. alert, that's, you know, you can that's, probably that's tune back in at this point, but yeah. Should, should I put timestamps on this shit? Nah. <laughs> People are gonna have to figure it out, because I don't think I, even I'm that good to learn. Like, this spoiler yeah. here and this spoiler here. Our podcast is a wall of spoilers. Yeah, I... I, I'm the type of person I can read through stuff and not get spoiled by it. That's me. So, I mean, if you if there actually, people out there don't agree with me, just skip this. You're like, it's yeah. like five minutes, probably. You skip through and you can... They you know, know that now. <laughs> well. <laughs> but no, I think um, that there's... I'm, I'm equally guilty to you now with what I'm about to do for getting us off on tangents. Um, but there was a, a theory that I was uh, going through, had caught online recently, that was called the spoiler theory. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know that that's the actual uh, research name that they put it up. Right. But it was a study that was done that uh, for the respondents that they questioned, they actually found that on the whole, if you spoiled something for someone and told them what was going to happen, there was Wait, less dis. It was less dissatisfaction with the end result than if they didn't know going in. You know what I mean? So it's a it's a one of those weird things that sometimes can work. uh, In sure, yeah, 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 it can change from the result that you would think it would naturally be the common sense result to something that is you know less predictable. So just throwing that out there. Just throwing that I, out I there, if anybody's... The same thing's true, so there you go. But if anybody's, you know, oh, you spoiled this and that for me. It's, hey, hey, when you really think about it, we might have helped you. <laughs> it's, not some, it's not something that's going to, you know... I'm sure they'll buy that. <laughs> well, you know, 
if you see, oh, they're, they're way more powerful than you should be. But it's not like you're not going to know that soon to get into that situation. Mm. Well, it's just you don't even know when you get into it. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to tell you everything. I'm not going to no. say like, oh, this guy's a level twelve, blah blah. I'm not going to tell you that shit. Yeah. That, you know, well, who ridiculous. needs to know that anyway? You shouldn't theoretically know that in game. You should be able to size up and just like this guy looks like he could take me or you know. But well, like you know, it's like oh, do you tell the person the plot line of the adventure you're playing? Mm. Why not? Because you know that's how I find if it's interesting to me or not. You know, I you know I'm yeah, not gonna tell you everything that goes it, on. Yeah, at least a vague you know. outline so I know whether I'm wasting my time. So you know. exactly, this is this is. This is a Cthulhu type adventure. You're going to run into Cthulhu type monsters. That's really all you need to know. Yeah, well, like I've said recently to our friend uh, Doug, I had told him about Dark Souls first off, I'm bringing right. that up again for reasons. But <laughs> Dark Souls, again, I've been grinding on the original game and taking my time finishing it. I'm, I'm a little over halfway through at this point. It's not as hard as everybody makes it out to, to be. But it's this game where, like, even the low-level enemies, when you're high level, you can still be punished for doing stupid things and not approaching right. them the way you're supposed and that's to. That's not a bad way of doing it. Honestly. It I really isn't, yeah. and and it's something. It's it's humbling in, in its own way. Get enough of them, and they'll take you down. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it's it's you know. I actually just recently heard they're bringing out the the next version. So Dark Souls. The new 3, DLC maybe? for Dark Souls Three. I think it just came out. I'm not I, sure. Yeah, I just heard. I just heard, I just saw on James Jacobs' thread the other day, which if anybody all, is those Pathfinder, they know James Jacobs. But yeah, all those super I cool. I just saw somebody uh, mention that on his thread the other day. I've gotten a a small a small addiction to watching some of those guys who like. Uh, uh, Vati video, like he needs a plug from me at this stage. Right. But he uh, goes through and does, they do some very in depth analysis. Plague of Gripes, uh, very funny guy, does uh, YouTube animations from time to time. He also did a very in depth Let's Play of Dark Souls where he discussed art down to the point of like even bricks that existed in that world. Like, why might these be this way? And there's Dark Souls is an interesting series in that it's the only, it's that and Bloodborne, which is basically is the same thing, are the uh -huh. only series is that really kind of they give you item descriptions and things, but they never tell you how this world really works. So you've got to oh, find out. You go through and you learn through the item description. Yep, you find them through that, that, and then you board. watch these other people with their analyses, and nobody knows for sure because the 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 uh, game designer. Uh, does not, has not told anybody exactly. Yeah, he doesn't anything, come out and yeah. say, this is what I was thinking. And it's that makes it a really interesting series. But also, there's a lot of bad stuff that can happen to characters you might want to befriend Keep or run for later. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, that's a series that I actually, personally, for myself, I recommend being spoiled on it. I spoiled right. myself on Dark Souls 1 before I played it, and I'm very glad that I did. And some people, purists, get upset when you go in and you, you know, especially Let's Players, like, know how a boss is going to react. Mm -hmm. So, like, they can already, ah, oh, I know what the trick is. Well, that doesn't, you can watch somebody do something, that doesn't mean you have the skill to do it. So a boss can still kick your butt. That but, is true, I guess. That is very true. But I, especially with those NPCs, I would say that's something that I wanted to be spoiled because if I hadn't handled things the way that I am handling them in Dark Souls 1, I would be very upset with the outcome of the game, and it would possibly possibly cause me to rage quit to the point that, like, I wouldn't come back, you know? That's true, yeah. yeah so. It's all good. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, some people like stuff spoiled, some people don't. And somebody just sent me a message. What the hell is that bullshit about? Anyways. <laughs> Hey. Probably should have never interrupted hey. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? So they go off in the middle when you're not expecting it. So We're live. Yeah. That's what happens, people. Yes. We all have lives other than podcasts, so. I meant we're live during the podcast. It's like, be professional. Jesus. Well, I can't help it when people are, you know, phoning me, so. Oh, 
Mr. That Sexy. Was, you know, Everybody was, got you know, to call my, you. I ringtone for my whatever the stupid thing is from whatever. I don't know. We, what the heck's that stupid guy, fairy's name from Lake? I don't know. Uh, you're, you're thinking of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Of time. Uh, Navi? Yeah, Navi. Yes. Well, yeah, that was my Navi. Hey! So, yeah. Hey, listen. That's it's such a great ringtone. Like... For me, there was one that I use commonly that I actually stole the idea from some dude who was at a, a, a sports bar I was at one night. He right. was some college kid. I hear his phone go off, and it was the codec call from Metal Gear Solid. And I'm like, that's... You, you decided that's, to download that yourself. Yeah. That's ingenious. Why not the hey thing because of K? Because, you know, he had the mm. hey listen. I just have A. He has A listen, so... Mm. But uh, I still, didn't, I didn't expect that to happen in the middle of you know podcast. So. <laughs> I didn't really hear That's it over here. People. Sorry. So I imagine people didn't hear it until you're like, "Hey, I'm, I've got a message. I'm super important in the middle of our podcast." <laughs> I'm not that important, people. <laughs> we, yeah. Nah, he is. We put out his. I e- like to think I am. You know, he put, we put out his email there, and you folks have been flooding it for days. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am the most important person in my own life. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to yeah. say. There you have it. Well, that and my nieces, because, you know. Hey, nieces! Mm. Like, the, really like nieces they're nice. listening to our highly suggestive podcast. Like my nieces, yeah. Well, my oldest niece is sick, so I'm, I hope she's not listening to me swear on this podcast. Well, <laughs> but then again, so. years down the road, Uncle Mikey, what did you used to do? <laughs> Honestly, it's not like she hasn't heard the F word before, because she hasn't. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, sis, but yeah, you swear a lot. <laughs> I love my sister to death, but man, well, you know, it's a good thing. Like nobody's business. It's a good thing your sister can't stand dragons and the like because th- that means she will never listen to this podcast, and she will likely. Well, it's, not even, it's not even that. It's just not something she's interested. She's she... fine with her kids listening to it. She, I'm, I'm she's just, just saying, it's like she's in that thing. She's which not is gonna... great because my nieces love dragons, and it's all because of me, <laughs> which I'm fine with that because a. You know, they love cool. watching dragons and looking at dragons and looking at the monster manuals and bestiaries and just, they love doing that. Uncle and I, Mikey I, is I, that's another way I identify with my nieces, so that's cool. So, yeah. Uncle Mikey is a corruptive influence on us. <laughs> well, because I, I like, I have swords, <clears throat> which any fantasy guy has swords. He does like and them. The first time my nieces saw my sword, they go, Uncle Mikey, are you a knight? <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever people. that's all I'm gonna say it's like, if that doesn't swallow somebody's heart I'm telling you what <laughs> I was like no but I was like, thank you you, know you, you just mean? go shh, shh, shh. Shh. no keep it on the DL your mom can't <laughs> find out <laughs> no I I said no I'm not a knight I just have so I like swords as you know because I'm fighter. I like swords yeah <laughs> but she was she was she, oh, can I see it and I pulled out showed her and she's like and then we watch dragon movies, and yeah, so. <laughs> my niece, I try to influence her as much as possible, because, well, it's just, hey, she's as much my kid as she's my sister's sometimes, I think, you know what I mean? Because, we, well, we live next door, so, but she's very important to me, so there you go. <laughs> Sorry for that tangent, but there you go. Uh, they loved it. I like to it's... brag about my niece. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it this way. They better love it, because this podcast is not getting any better now. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah uh that that old cthulhu <laughs> oh yeah what where, where did we leave off we keep we keep uh, such a tangent well he got us off on dark souls about spoilers so oh, yeah. you know this is sometimes the fun when we're just bsing guys it's like how did the conversation oh. get here <laughs> That's normally, I think, with most people. How did we get on this topic? Yeah. <laughs> well, people that actually talk to each other and, you know. Oh, yeah, friends. Friends get off on topics they never expected to get off on to. So that's just life. So I hope I hope that doesn't distract us from, you know, either enjoying our podcast or anything. <laughs> if it does, ah, fuck you. <laughs> you know. You've fallen asleep anyway. You put us on as some white noise before you go to bed. You fall asleep listening to us talk about bullshit. So, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have some weird dreams. <laughs> wow! Chicka wow wow! 
Well, funny you should mention that. That was one of the ones uh, that was a, a mental effect in the old school Call of Cthulhu uh, that, that really stuck with me. It was one of the things you could get uh, physically, sexually aroused by strange creatures. Yeah, no. <laughs> you roll the, the percentile dies like, no, nah, I'm into tentacle porn. I mean, what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. You, thank you. <laughs> tentacle porn does not do anything for me. Oh, come uh, on, Mike. We were both in an anime club. <laughs> I was in an anime club, but I wasn't in the tentacle porn. <sighs> I was in the hot, you know, Asian chicks, but not... <laughs> or... I don't know, hot <laughs> And that's where, that's where it goes, like, spot. Japan anime, I love you, but you're weird. <laughs> and some uh, of, yeah. on some things, we need our space. <laughs> well, because, you know, I, I... Hentai just, yeah, no. Doesn't really do it for me, honestly. Now, <laughs> fan service stuff, I don't mind so much. But, you know, it's... Yeah. Um, Tenshi Mio, for example. That's that's a great anime okay. For fake People used to give me crap as early as high school when I, when I started uh, watching Toonami Tenshi Muyo. I'm like, it's, it's a decent series, and like even it's now, it's a good series, like, even with the fans. I'm yeah. I'm half. I'm, I'm well, I'm not ashamed. I'm not half ashamed to admit, it, but like, I would be half concerned to try and explain to a girlfriend why a series like another one we watched, Seki Ray. Why that Second appeals to me? Awesome, actually. On its surface, it looks like, "Hey, I want to see girls' boobies," and it's kind but of it is. Actually, has a plot to it. It yes. kind of well, and that's one of the things that's important to me is that the the female characters in that uh, they, actually make sense. For the they content. have depth, like even yeah. the first main character, Mitsubi. Like Mitsubi she is, is awesome. Yeah. She is so simple, but she is so endearing. Like from the the beginning, some weirdo who made this manga well, she's was just a sweetheart. She's just a sweet girl. But some weirdo who made this manga was like, let's make hot women like Pokemon and have them fight, you know? And you power them up by kissing them on the lips, you know? And at some point, then then you first meet this character Mitsubi, and her she's she's so straightforward and so simple. Her whole thing is is any of the other. Seki Ray opponent she meets is like, I'm Mitsubi and I'm a fist type. Let's fight. <laughs> yep. I, I love, I, I, the, the only one I thought, the only the characters I didn't think were attractive was the man boy one, or the man girl one. That, and pushes, that pushes boundaries that uh, the Japanese like, like audience the is not. The one I, I, I really like the nerdy one, which I can never remember her name. Uh, Matsu. Matsu, yes. Matsu I like is... her and I like the sake loving one. But yeah. <laughs> See, I liked, I liked Matsu. Matsu's probably my favorite. If I were picking one of the girls for me, here we God, now I've turned this into anime fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. It's... If I were picking one of the girls for me, I really like Matsu. Um, I, I would say Skumi is another one who... Oh, Scooby, yeah. She it's like she's the very Sundere, uh, and here I drop some weeaboo language on you people. It's like which I don't even know what that means. So Sundere. There there's actually okay. I was gonna do like an educational video for people at some point on my YouTube channel, which we're not promoting here. But there's actually it's Japanese terminology, which uh, dairy dairy I believe is a sweet girl. So that's yeah. one of the terms that they have. They have a sundere, which I always remind myself is like tsunami. Sundere is a girl that is she's very standoffish and she's very angry at you first. Okay. Like she's she's the tomboy who's really pissed off. I don't really feel that way about you, idiot. You know that sort of thing. And then ah. once she starts to warm up to you and she starts to trust you, then she becomes really sweet. You know. Right. Then there's another fun one for you, Mike. Yandere. Yandere is a chick who starts off that she's very lovey-dovey and she's very concerned about everything that you do. And then she becomes slowly obsessive. And why are you pulling away from me? What are you doing? Are you with another girl? I'm so going to have to kill you. Yeah, yeah. 
Fun, okay. well, yeah, fun. While we're off on tangents anyway, fun thing, there's a, a <laughs> dude uh, who he's even has a, a YouTube channel for this indie project that he works on. It's called uh, Yandere Simulator. And this is an, a game that makes me very conflicted about, like, is this okay or am I not okay with this? You play a Japanese schoolgirl school girl in high school who is trying to win the affections of her older classmate, Senpai. Notice me, Senpai. How do you get that to happen? Well, you need to eliminate the other girl who's in love with Senpai before they can form a relationship. How do you do that? Well, you could go the more casual route of like, I'm going to set her up with another go a guy, tailor him to be what she wants. Or right. you could stab her in the neck and hide the body and clean up the blood. Or you could throw yeah. her off the roof of the school building. Or forge a note that gets her expelled from school. This is some dark stuff, folks. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's effed up is what that is, yeah. <laughs> Not my type of thing there, but yeah. And it's it's weird for me, because I mean, like, there you take a game like Hatred, and that game was, was a, a quote-unquote serial killer simulator, and it's just garbage. I'm sorry, but, like, there's few times where I will go, this game has nothing, n no redeeming value, no artistic value, you know. Uh, oftentimes I find that games and movies do, but Hatred right. was just like, hey, let's make something controversial for the sake of making something controversial, you know? And I have been loosely following what Yandere Dev is doing with Yandere Simulator, right. and he's actually adding in things that it's like, well, this actually is a cultural thing, however true or exaggerated it may be. So the game still definitely has artistic value, but I was re recently seeing how it's like, it's uh, on the ban list on Twitch TV game streaming right now. Um, and it's unclear why, but, uh, you know, I, I got a guess or two when oh, there might yeah. be a misunderstanding about that game. It's easy, very easy to be misunderstood about a lot of things out there that, you know, people don't understand. Well, I mean... D and D slash Pathfinder slash all this stuff has their misunderstanding about, but you know, the Jack Chick stuff, you know. <laughs> I still, I still was proud of myself because that was in the the mid of our uh, podcast there that I made that connection. Is like, wait, you become a wizard? They take you away? It is Last Starfighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Last Starfighter was such an awesome movie that if you guys have not that, seen it, yeah. it, it's an 80s classic that you need to, to like rent or something. So this kid uh, lives in a trailer park uh, with his mom. He, he's like, I think it was home his from girlfriend college. girlfriend lives in a trailer park too. Yeah. And he doesn't really have a clear set future yet, but he keeps playing this coin op uh, arcade box that was dumped at, at the edge of the park. And he keeps getting better and better at this starfighting game. And it turns out that some wily alien had put that there because he, he's some kind of, uh, you know, intergalactic schemer that he was, char he was training up other uh, races to play this game. And if you played the game the best... Then it's like, ah, you you qualified to be a starfighter because all this does is simulate the fighting system in this specific ship. So he was the gunner. Uh, right. They pair him with another alien. If, I won't spoil anything for you, but it's a great movie. Definitely worth the watch. It's a great movie. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite movies from when I was a kid. So, But that's go. living the dream, man. It's like, that's... Exactly, yeah. It's like, I want to be the hero. And, it, and sorry, Jack Chick, trying to turn people off of that. It's like, the evil part's not great, but... If you could say, hey, you played D&D &D well enough, you get to live in this fantasy world for a bit, bring it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do it every day. You know, I think I can win. I think I can win at D&D. &D. That's all I'm saying. Uh, or Pathfinder or whatever. You, you know. Because uh, honestly, if I was set in one of these worlds, I think I could take it all over because I know so much about it already. I but, still, yeah. in my head, uh, to me, there's 
like no distinction Pathfinder is D and D, you know. Yeah, really, there's not a whole lot of distinction. Well, except for between Pathfinder is three point five. There's yeah, not a I'm whole on three point five. There's folks. a little bit, but not enough to really, you know. <laughs> Pathfinder is not fourth edition because fourth edition. Sorry, I probably shouldn't start an edition war, but yeah, that stuff is horrible crap. Fifth edition is better, still not my type I, of thing. We play. I, I, there's a lot of things I do enjoy about fifth edition, but there's also it's just nice. We played a play test on that. We were at a con, one of the, the few cons we've hmm. ever gone to. I, I was dragging Mike along and our buddy Doug. It's actually. an anime convention, by the way. Yeah, yes. our buddy Doug actually. Well, see there, we've tied it all together. See, our tangent hey, wasn't that anime bad. Anime type, ooh, it did. That worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> but we were, we were at this anime Who convention, knows? and our buddy Doug was able to join us. He had gotten off of work, and uh, we had we were going around the con, and we came across this this board game uh, place, and they actually had a copy of Fifth Edition, and they had some sample. I think they were first or second level character sheets already filled first. out that you could play. Yeah. And, of course, at first level, you're not... The guy like, actually ran the game for us. Yeah, because so none of us knew how to DM that. But the there was one of the guys working on the booth actually could run the game for us. So we're like, yeah, we'd like to try it out. So Spent a couple hours and played 5th edition. It wasn't mm -hmm. bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't... What were you playing, Mike? I played the wizard. And I think uh, I Doug was... Because, you know, Doug was the warrior type, as he commonly you is. Played, I was a human wizard, at my, or maybe it was an elf. Doug was a dwarf fighter, I believe. Yeah. And all these and things... I played an elf wizard, and I think... He, or a human wizard, and you played a halfling... I played rogue, a halfling rogue, because it was the closest thing to my regular we could find. Since these were Wait. all... These were already filled out, and like we were on kind of a time crunch, because it was the end of that particular day at the con... You know, there was right. only so much we could do. But uh, I remember we were with a caravan. Uh, Doug had managed Escorting to... Escorting it to a, the next town or something. I yes. think there were goblins we were up against. He had killed a few that were I in the I think the goblins we put... Yeah, that's what we fought first. Yeah. And then we get to this uh, town and, you know, I'm trying to find out information about this uh, underground thieves guild that that's, uh, you know, important to the main plot. So Doug was saying to me, uh, for this guy who doesn't know us, is like, why don't you hit him with some of the garbage that you do, <laughs> or some of the crap you do? And I'm like, okay. Full Samaras, yeah. Yeah, so again, I'm, I'm not playing the character I'd normally build, but I work with what I've got. So I take this little halfling, and I uh, have a few uh, sips of ale, and the bartender he adds in sneers at me when he hands me the mug. It's like a little freaking halfling, can't handle this. So I go over and I uh, talk to the guys and they're they're not having it, right? So that'll happen sometimes, kids, if you play persuasive characters. There are encounters that, like, you are probably not going to be able to grift these guys. It's not going to happen. But they're still... Just, uh, they're against you from the start. Yeah, but still, follow through because you never know. And if you play your cards right, you'll at least be able to walk away and it'll make sense. Now, I played uh, one of my tricks that I've used in another campaign that Eric DM, that maybe we'll talk about this episode, maybe not. Maybe, we're, maybe not. We're yeah. sitting at about an hour right now of time that we've spent. Oh, really? Holy crap. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It flies. We but, talk a lot, uh, yeah. This is why I'm keeping track. <laughs> but, um, and we barely covered what we were going to, so... <laughs> That's why I was like, should I even try and discuss the new stuff? Uh, I don't know. But it's um, the uh, the guys are having their in conversation and they don't want me to hear it. And I'm going over. I'm like, uh, how's it going, uh, Phil? How how how's the wife and kids? You know that sort of thing. <laughs> and he Not the Phil? or no, you know Terry. I hit him with Terry because oh, maybe. That's right. It's fu it's stupid, but maybe. <laughs> I'm like, how's it going, Terry? You know, so you just play yourself off, kids. Like, you're just a drunk bar goer, so maybe you're obnoxious, 
but you're drunk, so you think you know this guy. So it's kind of a believable grift. Mm. And uh, he's like, that's not my name. That is not my name. And I'm just getting nowhere with them. I can't persuade them with anything that I'm trying. And I love this dude. Doesn't even know me. It's like, just figures out how to come back at me. Just puts his fist, hits the, the table in front of his book. Is like, my name is Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So I'm, I'm like, okay, okay. I don't know why you're so mad at me, Terry, but jeez. So, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swill the rest of the mug. I forgot I was playing a halfling. He goes, are you sure you want to do that? Ah, like, screw it. He's probably going to die anyways. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Make a constitution save. Roll it! Got it! Yeah! <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, I graciously Start bow out at yes. I'm like, I graciously uh, bow out at this point with the, the mildly impressed barkeep. And he's like, okay, you drunkenly stumble away. <laughs> and I think that's about where we ended, I think. Because yeah, the time we, out. we ran yeah. out of time at that point, but that was such a strong note for me to end it that way. And I... I really appreciate that this this dude who like we just met that day, like, <laughs> yeah, he was pretty impressed. Honestly, he's a pretty good sport about the whole thing. Honestly, so yeah. Oh, uh, and that's a, that's another thing is like why why we do what we do is like you you can make friends we do it and, for we do it for chuckles is basically yeah. you know that's why we play but games. that's why you play in the first like, place is in, in as we discussed in the last episode you hang out with friends you enjoy your time you're spending you know the important things in life folks the really exactly, important yeah. things. well if you, you you can't laugh about the things you do in life there what's the point that's <laughs> basically my thought so do we want to stay on cthulhu mike or do we want to try and broach starfinder before we run out of time well, let's try. It. Let's yeah. Let's you know we can move on. I think um, if we if anybody has any you know questions for later, if, they, if we actually get people to what, watch this, what well, little we know, maybe they can ask me questions for us, and then we can answer them later. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not like we're insiders and we have information that people don't. It's like go on the forums. You know about as much as we do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Starfinder, because that coming up is. There's not a whole lot of information out there. Yeah, apparently it's super under wraps, so, you know. Whatever. Well, unlike most of the previous things that, you know, Paizo has done, they have not done an open play test. It's been a closed play test. Mm -hmm. So we only get little nibbles and bits here and there, so there you go. But it still looks like an interesting system, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I hope, you know, I hope it goes well. Uh, other than that, um, so what do we have? I know there are new races that I, I glanced at, and again, I didn't read too much into this. But like, what's uh, there's been what's five up? races that have been totally revealed at this point. Um, there's humans because there's humans and everything because that's that's a reference point. Everybody everybody can understand a human, so it's very easy to say, "Hey, I'm going to play a human because I understand." It. Um, there's another race called. Isoki, which is also called a rat, rat folk. It's you know, ah. it's from a different planet. Rat, rat folk. Which is your Isoki is folk their space. Isoki is their space name, huh? It's well, because they're from a different planet, so they're called something different. So, oh my! They're from they're from the Mars equivalent. Oh my God! Yep. Are we get? Uh, are we seriously doing biker mice from Mars? Is that a thing? I don't know if they're biker mice, but so, yeah, they're... No, somebody had to have known. Somebody knows that that oh, was a probably. thing. probably. Well, the, the, yeah, the this, main creative director this was... for, for Starfinder is James Sutter, and he's pretty familiar with a lot of things. See, that was not one of my hot series, but that was when I was starting to, to go out of that phase. I would not be surprised like, if he took influences from stuff like got, that. But, Biker mice from Mars, street sharks, you know, anything to try and be like Ninja Turtles. Can yeah, it's not, it's not quite that crazy, but yeah. I, 
I wouldn't be surprised if there was influences from different things like that because, he, like I said, he's well-read dude. He actually has a, a few novels of his own out there. So, and some of the best novels in the Pathfinder universe. I, in, in fact, I think. I mean, but, uh, yeah. now let me let me correct the, the, the any one in the audience who might not be understanding where I'm going with this is like I'm not saying that this is a bad thing that that is the joke but I'm right. saying oh my god you went for it that's the joke <laughs> yeah no, I don't think so but yeah <laughs> but yeah Isoki which is like I said that's the name of the rat folk that they call themselves mm -hmm. um, there's androids which you know everybody knows what an android is yeah. uh Crap. Kasatha, which are sort of a medium-sized four-armed race, so they have four arms. They're an alien from a different galaxy, blah, 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 whatever. Shut up, computer. The, for the people who are like, what's that ding, 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 ding? That's my Windows 10 notifying me of things that shouldn't be notifying me mid-conversation. But of course not, the, because the, it doesn't anything stuff. The maintenance app I have on this, uh, like I can't control that, so sorry. <laughs> this, uh, this is the it, hey, at least I'm not on rum and coke again and, and slurring my words. But <laughs> pros and cons, folks. Pros and cons. So I'm sorry, Mike, you were uh, you were spacing. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the fifth race is. It's the one from the Venus equivalent, which is, I'm actually looking it up right now. So. Mm. Another pro to having our computers is that we're able to do that. So, Jeez, there's a lot of races in Pathfinder. <laughs> I just realized that when I'm looking Yeah, well, them. you figure 3.5 added a lot to second, or third edition added a lot to second edition added a lot. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, the fifth race is La Shunta. Which they're sort of like, they have like some telepathic abilities so they can, you know, talk to each other. They're a dimorphic race, so like the females are tall and skinny, and when the males are short and small okay. and hairy, so well, they're a little bit different. But we're which is kind of neat because it's something completely different, but yeah. We're sure they're not the Protoss, though, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. And the last two races, we don't know what they are going to be at this point. I mean, I could speculate to a certain degree, uh, but I, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I actually think one of the races is probably going to be a contemplative of, of a shock, but which is kind of a floating brain with like a really dainty body, but you know what I mean? So, okay. And then the other one, there's another race in the, in the solar system, which is it's not Ion, but it, it was basically their world was destroyed by the people of Ion. And they're kind of like a floating whatever thing at this point. So I'm kind of caught, I, I honestly don't know if that's going to be them or not. Actually, that it's probably highly unlikely that's going to be it. Hmm. It might actually be the, the, the ring world, the one that's only has a certain, like, the around the perimeters, they only have a slight... I honestly don't know. It's... it's pro I'm probably wrong on totally all these. Giant things, brains, and re my random mind is going from Krang from Ninja Turtles over to uh, Halo for the ring world at this stage. They're, they're basically... They have, like, really dainty bodies, like... And they can basically float and shit. Mm -hmm. Uh... But like I said, they have big brains, and they're, you know, they're very, that's why I call them contemplators, because okay. they think a lot, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's going to be them or not. I, I've you, heard rumors that some other people have described some of the other races, but I... Would you surmise that maybe that. some psionics might come into play in this, or are they going to steer clear of that? I think they're sticking clear of that at this point. They might have some psychic, not necessarily psionics, but yeah. Mm. Well, I think um, we... Because we... they, they, they have basically a bunch of new classes that they're doing. I think there's seven or eight classes, but yeah. 
like none of the new classes in this system are going to have more than six level spell casting, as far as I can tell so far. Yeah. So magic's less of a thing than it is in you know normal Pathfinder. Well, I think we can slip in here. We if, if we make this a bit longer of an episode, hopefully SoundCloud won't uh, kick the tail end of it off. But um, so this is kind of a not a revival, but in somewhat of a same vein of the old uh, D and D two point I think it was, or was it one point even? Um, I think it was sec. I think it was second edition at that point. But yeah. Spell jammer. Spell yeah. yeah. It's kind of a cross, but yeah, it's a lot of the ways it's similar, but then again, a lot of the ways it isn't. I, I was going to... still was basically Pathfinder in space. Yeah. This is going to be new classes, new races, new... It's This is more of a space opera. This is Star Wars meets Star Trek kind of thing mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So it's going to be similar, but then different from Spelljammer, so. Well, um, I was going to harass you. I was like, Mike, tell us a story. Tell us a story of when Spelljammer used to be a thing. <laughs> Spelljammer. Spelljammer back in the day was pretty awesome, actually. Um, it has its own kind of quirks and weird things about it, but I actually really enjoyed the system, honestly. But it yeah, they had... Like GIF. GIF was a race in Spelljammer, which was basically giant half human, half hippopotamus people. They were really cool, but they were kind of weird too. You know, I mean, they were very cartoonish. You know, I, I only recently looked this stuff up, and I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around that. It's like there apparently there was an old DOS game. That, mm -hmm. that that exists. Yep. That all I could really find on it is a couple of gameplay footage videos with no commentary. And it's... some random dude on YouTube is out in the woods. Apparently this is his thing. He unboxes things in the forest. Um, what? Yeah. So That's it's like we're going to have a box stuff. opening of this game in the That's forest. Just fucking weird shit. That's, I'm hey, sorry. That's fucked up. He's got more subscribers than we do right now, so maybe we're doing it wrong. <laughs> well, I'm going to come back and kick his ass later. But yeah. Oh, we just started. Probably we'll we'll give him a yeah, break. Sorry. Just, <laughs> that's just fucking weird. But I'm no, sorry. that's that's apparently a thing that exists. Is like I unbox different old school stuff in the woods, and that's my thing. So uh, it's not. Like, I can go on. You know, unbox my wang out in the middle of the woods. That doesn't make it cool. It's just, that's just well, right. you, well, you know where we got to go in this. It's so, like we can't can't do it well enough to to uh, be sued. But it's my dick I, in a box. Oh, my dick in a box. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna unbox my dick. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take back what's yours. <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, like the. The videos being, like, there is old DOS that's like, oh, I want to go and, and go over to a site like Good Old Games and download this and play it. This game was not one of those. Like, it was to the point where it's, like, turn-based and the noises are obnoxious and they don't stop and the music is obnoxious and it doesn't stop. That's a lot of the original... Stop. So it might actually be first edition. But that's a lot of the original, you know... One of my favorite games of all time for, you know, D&D-wise was uh, Pool of Radiance. Mm -hmm. It was turn-based, it was all blocky, it was really shitty, it had crappy music, but it was an awesome game because it was D&D &D on the computer, you know yeah. what I mean? So, Well, nostalgia is going to go a long way in that stuff. I don't well, know yeah, I mean, I still enjoy it. I, you know, it, some of that game was hard. They actually, mm -hmm. did, it, they actually did a Nintendo game for it, so... Which was a lot better than the original computer game, but yeah, yeah. I still love that game to this day because it was it was fun. It was D and D on the computer or, or Nintendo or you know whatever. It was great. Yeah, but it, it was compared to today's standards, it's pretty shitty. You know what I mean? Well, but that's you, you know, gotta give those sort of way. things leadway, and oftentimes I do. But that was one of those cases where it's like it's like no, there's there's no 
again, I play for story, so like I'm looking at this and there's not enough here that I can discern what's going on from these the videos. The story was still relatively decent, even if the, even if the, the graphics and mm. whatever gameplay was pretty crappy. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, for it your... For your game, yes. For this game, I'm looking. Uh, thanks, I'll pass. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Spelljammer. I I but, remember that even being particularly bad back in the day. Well, and there so. is a uh, a uh, image that I always think of whenever we Spelljammer comes up because it was the first thing that I'm like, what is this? Um, that uh, when we were in college, a, a uh, guy that we knew had put it on your computer for a while as a, a desktop background and it was you, if you guys uh search for spell jammer you're likely to find it in like google images or whatever uh it was, basically it was atari graphics on the computer no it wasn't not what i'm talking about <laughs> the well, image that's what Paul the image said, folks while mike's on his tangent that i'm talking about guys is like uh, uh spell uh spell jammer it's like it's like D and D meets Star Trek. It's like porn for nerds, and oh, it's I a, actually had a I actually had you probably, a one well, of my back tops when I was in college. Was that's that's what I was just hurt. saying, but you weren't listening to me. That? That's what I was just saying. I always think of, but you weren't listening to me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, well, uh, that was Carol. Carol did that for me, so yeah, but that was one of my ex girlfriends. Thank you, Carol. But uh, the coolest thing she ever did for me was give me my background. But yeah. yeah. And that was, what were the, the ships? I know we were discussing the one thing is like, I only know them as flayers. What was the the race in that set? Oh, the ships were called nautiloid ships. Yeah. yeah. They were nautiloids. They were from the mine flayers. But yeah. But that's what we're. Elephants or whatever you want to call them. But yeah. That's more Call of Cthulhu shit right there. Is like what those flayers. Mine flayers like. were probably based off of Cthulhu stuff. More yeah. likely than not, but not likely enough that anybody they, can make if, a claim. If you look at a mine flayer versus a star spawn, they kind of look alike. So yeah. there you go. To a certain, well, the face. face well, and I would, I may Star be, spawn looks like giant freaking elephants, so. I may be getting my HP Lovecraft mixed up because I'm not the most well-versed expert, but I've, I've read a few. Um, I th believe that what he calls Star Spawn changes from story to story. So, uh, yeah. there, there's like this internal inconsistency of Call of Cthulhu, and I heard a rumor well, that that was he, the yeah, way he, he wanted it. He, the, he intentionally left details very vague. Mm. So other people could capitalize or write in the same universe without stepping on his toes, so forth. And that's very, how I'm going to tie in that sort of thing. But yeah, that's how I'm going to tie in Dark Souls and explain that tangent. So, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it all comes together eventually, folks. Uh, so well, eventually it will come together. But yeah, I like it when a plan comes together. As Hannibal used to say, I can't say tie in a team. I can't make that work. Uh. No, well, I can't. Well, I, I probably I, could. Um, so we also probably should mention uh, we do have a little bit of time here once I add the music in. But uh, I th also think we should give a shout out uh, to the website D Twenty P F S R D. They have their own spell jammer. It can't be exactly spell jammer we were discussing because there is some. Copyright. They call it Star Jammer, I believe. Yeah, they call it Star Jammer. Um, it is an updated version of the rules to, to fit with Pathfinder. But again, uh, you know, we were discussing, I think some of the races you had said couldn't be the same because well, there because were problems. It's, yeah, IP, yeah, it's IP stuff. It, it's protected, so you can't use. And I could go on a several hour and right, rant about copyright TSR, problems. Well, TSR slash... Wizards of the Coast is very protected in their IP stuff, so which I don't pay. Yeah, you know, at I least, understand. at least, I think that's kind of a bad thing in the long run. But you know, hey, it, it annoys me too. But at least we do have open game license. That was a thing that ultimately right. came out, and you know, it is better than nothing. And There's a lot of well, open game flats. Pathfinder is all o OGL, so it's great because they you know, anybody can use their stuff as long as you quote them, and you just can't use. 
protected names and such. Yeah. But yeah. Which, I mean, uh, in, th in theory, if we're trying to build our own worlds anyway, make it our own, to a certain extent, why would you want to? Well, take... yeah, you don't, you don't want to give away but, the, you know, the cash cow, so to speak. But I, yeah. I will say some of the stuff like... Uh, I've... But the, rule, the rules in general are not protected, so it's... For, our, a... for our own reasons, I was it's recently... Just, it's just uh, names and such. Yeah, for our own reasons, like I was recently go, uh... going through Classic Monsters Revisited again to read up on some stuff uh, for a, a project we're working on that maybe we'll tell you guys about in the future once it's further along. But um, the uh, the Knowles, I read that backstory, and I was super jealous. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm like... I think they did a good job. You're good. Course. You, sir, are good. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, it's probably James Jacobs or somebody along that line, but yeah... But, uh, James Jacobs is he's brilliant when it comes to a lot of things that they put out there, I think. Well, just a lot of people that worked at Paizo in the past and been it, it had a lot of influence. Well, James Jacobs, he was the big goblin guy, so he mm -hmm. did And the the goblins like the revamped goblin songs and all that stuff. That was all him. Well, I, and I have to figure really like, appreciate the shit out of that stuff. It really I like I knew about goblins before, but they were never so prevalent as when I had already started uh, like doing the Pathfinder play test with with Doug mm -hmm. DMing, and it really, I wouldn't say that it um, anchors you kind of in the world. You know what I mean? It gives you the well. I mean, like there was no point at which I'm like, this is not, uh, this is clashes with how I already envisioned goblins because it all seemed to fit, but it, it just it brought them out just a it little worked bit more, well. You know what I mean? You know, now one thing that I may have a minor criticism was I know in one of the descriptions they had talked about how easily goblins lose focus during fights. So like they'll like dig a meal worm out of the ground or you know. Uh, I kind of like that though because then it makes them. To a certain extent, it can easily go overboard, but you know. Well, yeah, if you take it too far, yeah, but it's not something. You know, it's not something you should just like. Oh, every round they're gonna you know be you know. Digging it through boogers or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just, but it's something <laughs> to make the unique. Ah, you know, you know, human. That's why they you have not, gotta... you know, so many of them, but that's why they <laughs> haven't really become such a nuisance because they very they easily lose focus or do whatever. You know what I mean? Human cut Dobbs head off. He coming for me? Oh, hang on, just a minute. <laughs> you know that that doesn't happen. Well, no, but, I'm, you know. I'm just yeah, saying it's like that. in there, one of them might be, you know, scratching his balls rather than attacking <laughs> you. That's not such a big deal. It actually gives them a little more depth and a little bit of, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, I mean, uh, I but think... they're too busy munching on their pickle to the, attack you. The, the, you know, the true... That's, that, that's a little extreme, but I think, like, the, the true spirit, though, of what he was going for clicks with me as far as, like, they are, are very... Um, self-absorbed not bright little creatures that are just you know tenacious i i would not even necessarily they're stupid they're just they have a, there's things that more interest them than rather than just mm. whacking you upside the head you know what i mean but um yeah the uh the goblin well actually yeah for uh both uh what is it about goblins chant both in classic uh token the hobbit and in, like, the stuff that James Jacobs and the others have written for Pathfinder, whenever I read a Goblin song, I pretty much have the tune down in my head, how it okay. should go. <laughs> yeah. Well, they all have their own little, little, you know, their idea of a Goblin chant or whatever. Mm. Which, I, like I said, I appreciate them. Now, do they get annoying? Yes, but that's part that's part of their charm because they're so damn annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, just to to reiterate, because we kind of steamrolled over it with with uh, Goblin talk and, and other stuff in there. Uh, Star Jammer D twenty PFSRD, which if yep. you guys are not already familiar with that site, is a a great resource that I commonly use whenever we're gaming and I don't have quick access to, like, I know what I'm doing, uh, look up spell lists on there, look up, uh, 
what your class hit die is, all that sort of thing is readily available on there. Through the another open... good another good resource also is Archives of Mepis. Um, hmm. They use actually all the PFS RD is good, except they don't use any like trademark names and stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Archives of Mepis still does. They're a little slower updating than PFS RD, but they're still you know. If you're all just all going to get all, it's all Paizo stuff. Archives and that this is your source. But if you wanted third party plus, you know, whatever else, PFS RD is your thing to go to. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that Star Jammer is on the website. There's currently a uh, icon, depending on when you're listening to this, or a, a box that appears at the top giving right. you a more information thing you can click if you're interested in buying it the star jammer uh, core rule book uh, core rule book is currently retailing for 1495 we received no money to promote them otherwise they might have been towards the beginning of this podcast instead of the right, very exactly. end <laughs> but it's, if, you, if you're interested check it out i mean pfsrd does some pretty good stuff honestly yeah. so so uh I'd say that pretty much uh, wraps up this podcast, Mike. Unless there was, I, I really don't have anything else to say. I mean, I mean, I probably do, but there's no point in me rambling on like, for hours. For hours so yeah, we could do a whole another episode now, maybe, but <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't want to hear it because we'd just be repeating ourselves over and over again. So yeah. So thanks everybody again for listening. This is Morris signing out. And Mike, um, yeah. AK, also known as Volantric, so there you go. Yes, once again, if you'd like to talk to Mike especially, or either of us really, you can email volantrics at gmail.com. Once again, I'll do my announcer voice at the end. And, uh, you know, just... Yeah, I'll try to get back to you and try to, if you, like I said, if you have any questions for us, we'll be more than glad to answer them on the next podcast if you give us to us. So. Yeah, I know we uh, went off on several tangents here, but hey, that's the way it is without you guys... Telling us this is what I want to hear about, so give us something. Yeah, if, you, if you guys have any suggestions, we'd be more happy to you know address them and maybe in the next podcast. So there you go. Whatever it is, keep it nerdy. Until next time, guys. Take her easy. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions on either YouTube or SoundCloud.com. You can also give us something more to talk about next time or talk with Mike about your best wizard build by emailing volantrix at gmail.com. That's volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. Thank you.